Ah, excuse me. Okay. Uh, I get the screen going here. Can everybody hear me? Oh, I better bring up my chat also. There we go. Can y'all hear me and see the desktop? Yes. All right, thank you. <laughs> Looks like my internet's a little slow tonight. I don't know, we'll see how it's going. So I hope everybody's doing okay, keeping safe. <clears throat> And might unshare my video too. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, I've got a few here now. <coughs> um, So let's see. So as usual, I've got uh, a couple things that uh, I can go over. Um, I mean, I was probably planning on uh, definitely talking about the assignment. Um, so hopefully everybody's at least looked at that. I know some people are working on that now. Um, so kind of as a reminder, the, the first assignment is due at the end of this week by 5 p.m. So you definitely should get started on that. <clears throat> Uh, so we'll see how people do on that. So, you know, it's it's Python and NumPy um, and Pandas questions in there. So. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I had a few announcements. Make certain that you're reading your announcements. Um, at this point, I believe most everybody has gotten their dev box up or has got a satisfactory environment that they're gonna work with. Almost everybody, I, I think. So I, I think I got from most everybody some kind of an acknowledgement. If you're still working on that, let me know. Um, and I can um, get you some help. Um, but yeah, yeah, you should probably get that up there because yeah, you do need to be looking at the video lectures and working on the assignment for this week. So, <clears throat> um, so yeah, besides the assignment, uh, and maybe I'll just jump to that and start talking about that as usual. You know, this is supposed to be more of like a help session. So, uh, you know, blurt out questions if, if you have any or, or if I am, um, prompt any questions in you when we're talking about stuff here. So my main my main thought probably is to look at the program assignment, although I might go ahead and start to say a few words about matplotlib and um, numpy and things, see if anybody wants to ask any questions about that. So, so that was supposed to be the main thing. So you were supposed to at least look through um, you know, the, the, the basics of the Python language last week, in, in addition to getting your environment up. Um, and so I hope you all kind of familiarized yourself with, you know, like what a function looks like in Python and how you write it and, you know, the basics of like constructing a loop and, um, uh, and, and syntax for condition statements, if statements and things. And, uh, and, and hopefully, again, you know, you don't have to be an expert at all on, on Python yet. Uh, you'll, you'll pick up a lot of it just from looking at examples and things. Um, but hopefully you got a little bit of a flavor of sort of, um, you know, what you can do with Python and kind of the, 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 the power of it, the high level uh, nature of it, you know, especially like with the things, you, the, the built in data structures and libraries that are available. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> All right, um, yeah, I've got my Jupyter Lab up, so maybe I'll just kind of 
scroll through here, see if, um, scroll through the um, notebooks for this week first, uh, and then maybe at some point jump to talk a little bit about the assignment while we wait and see if people have some specific questions or issues they want to bring up. So, by the way, I mean, you know, um, although the, I, I provided the, the dev boxes with the, the Jupyter Hub and Jupyter Lab in there, um, mainly just so I'm certain that everybody has a, a common environment uh, that I know works and everything. Um, you know, you are free to, to, you, to install your own version of, of like say Anaconda on your own system. Um, you know, you might have to do your own, um, you know, IT and support, you know, I can, I can help you if, if there's an issue in the dev box and get that fixed. Um, if it's your own system, you know, um, although one thing I did want to mention, you know, if, if you do have your own um, GPU on your system, there, there is a particular reason why you might want to uh, install locally instead of using the dev box. Uh, because getting the, the, the pass through so you can use your GPU inside of this virtual machine um, is not so straightforward, you know. So although, uh, on the other hand, so, so GPUs are really useful in some kinds of machine learning. Uh, so they're, they're especially useful for like neural networks uh, and deep learning systems and things like that. Uh, but a lot of kind of the more basic machine learning algorithms don't benefit from the GPU. They, they don't really use it that much. So for example, the, the scikit-learn library doesn't really uh, hook into sending its stuff to the GPU. Um, um, I mean, as far as I know, not, not at all. So it's not, it's, not, it's not that it doesn't default to trying to use a GPU to speed stuff up. It, the, most of the stuff really can't, right? So I mean, there are some basic machine learning algorithms that, that could be put on GPU, but, um, uh, but we're going to be using scikit-learn a lot um, in this class, and it doesn't as a rule. So, so yeah, even if you have a GPU for a lot of the things that we do this semester in this class, um, it won't help you a lot. So, so all that means is that, um, you know, you'll have the same performance whether you use the dev box and the virtual machine, um, or you run it um, on your host machine, make your own installation. So. Okay. Um, so we had three kinds of things, uh, notebooks, actually a fourth one, but like I said, um, Seaborn, you know, you can think of it as kind of an optional one. I, I mean, there's probably some useful stuff in there, but we probably won't use it um, in this class in particular, at least not a lot. So. Um, oh, a, another announcement while I just thought of it before I forget about it. So um, I'm, you probably shouldn't work too far ahead. Um, so uh, I, I do have a lot of material already for this class, but um, I've been rearranging some things and, and I actually kind of been making some new stuff for like the second assignment. Um, so I've got like this week's uh, and next week's and the week's lecture after that. Um, I haven't gotten kind of uh, the second assignment up there that I want. So, so yeah, anyway, you should, you know, you got the assignment, you should be, assignment one, you should be working on this week um, and get it in by, by Friday. Um, and I'll try to get, make certain the assignment two is ready to go before Friday so that you have, I'm trying to get about every two weeks that we have an assignment at the end of the week, basically, so. Uh, all right. So yeah, um, so we kind of have, uh, I thought, you know, I'd talk a little bit about NumPy and Matplotlib and um, Pandas a bit, maybe see if that, um, if that um, invoke, provokes some questions and things, yeah. And, and you know, I am seem to be having some network issues, so I'm not certain that I can clear up anything um, besides turning off my video and stuff. So I'll try and maybe speak up a little bit, but um, um, yeah. So, 
your first few questions on the first assignment um, have to do with, uh, well, the, actually the first question is about writing a Python function. Um, and like I said, later on, I'll, I'll probably bring up the assignment, see if we have questions about that. Uh, but you know, feel free to go ahead and ask those now if you want, we can always jump to that. Um, but yeah, your second question and third question are, are kind of really uh, about using NumPy and NumPy arrays and things, so. Um, let me rerun all those so I got everything ran, run in here. So, I don't know, a couple of things. Oh, how to submit assignment. Uh, there should, there'll be a MyLeo um, online uh, submission folder. So, um, so, I mean, you'll submit it to that. So all I'll need for the assignments is the uh, the IPython notebook. Okay, so 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 if you go back, you know, so you'll have your assignments over here. Uh, oh, one thing I do suggest that maybe you make a copy of this before you start working in the assignments if you haven't already, because you know we are using Git underneath here, and if I make, um, you know. I, I, I try not to change the assignments uh, while you're working on them, but if I made a change to an assignment and then you try to do a git poll, you might have a conflict or something like that. So it's probably always a good idea to do something like um, um, uh, like right click on that and, and uh, there's a way to duplicate it or, or copy it. So make a duplicate, maybe maybe add your name to the uh, to the thing on there, you know, so um, rename it. And then work in your own version of it and leave the original assignment kind of un, um, untouched, for example. So, but anyway, so back to the original question. Oh, and probably I should, I should try and remember uh, for maybe for people watching this video, I don't think they can actually see the, the chat. So I, I guess I should try and repeat these questions. Um, the, um, the, the question was how to submit the assignment. Uh, actually, I kind of skipped one, one person's question, so I'll come back to that one. So, but yeah, to submit the assignment, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll just want to work in the IPython notebook. So, you know, you'll work on the IPython notebook. And, and again, I suggest that you make a copy of it uh, and, and work in the copy. Um, so, you know, you'll add your code in here or whatever, or, or you might have written answers for some of these assignments later on. You didn't have any for this first one. And, and you know, make certain that you save it. Um, but then that file you have to upload, right? So um, your folder, um, if you didn't realize, I mean, is is uh, shared with your, you know, your your host machine if you're using the dev box. So, for example, if, if I go, this, this is a file browser on my host machine here. So um, on, on my machine that's running the virtual dev box. And, and, you know, I've got the repos like I, suggested you guys do the ML Python class. So, you know, if you're working on your assignments, you can go to your host machine um, and you'll find your file in there. So that, that's the file I just duplicated and, and kind of started working on, right? So yeah, and, and you should be able to just submit that to MyLeo um, submission, to the correct My, MyLeo submission folder, the, the IPython notebook, all right? Is that clear enough? If I, I, I think, I don't know, this, this, I don't know if this is still a problem or not, but, um, you might have to rename the extension. So sometimes, but I think that was, this was the old submission, the, the, our old class management system, you know, didn't like anything except for files like a .txt file or specific types, right? So if you have to, I guess you can rename that as .txt or something, but I don't think you have to. I think you can just um, upload the uh, IPython notebook. So. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't, um, any any Jupyter any Python installation that you have, you can work on, right? Um, I mean, I'm gonna. You need to be working using Python 3.8. Um, I mean, and you're gonna have to have the, the correct libraries installed, right? So I don't think you'll have a problem if you if you want to install it yourself, as long as you are using Python 3, um, and 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 you know you won't be able to do the assignment unless you install matplotlib and scipy and all the other things, but you'll have to figure that out yourself if you're not going to use the deadline. But that's fine um, if, if you need to. Yeah. <clears throat> um, in general, 
I mean, you know, for these assignments, uh, I'm probably going to just uh, kind of have 100 points on here. I, I, I usually kind of write what the points are. Each one of these is probably, each one of these four problems, I'm probably just going to have about equally weighted. Um, so, uh, so, you know, think of this as about 25 points out of 100 for each one of these four problems, right? And, and yeah, to get the, the points, you'll have to um, um, answer all the particular questions, you know, th that are asked for in each one of these four separate problems. So. So just to repeat on submitting the assignment, just upload this IPython notebook file to uh, our MyLeo online submission folder, okay? So, so in MyLeo online, under content, um, under, I think it's under week one, um, oh, not discussion, assignment one, um, in there, there'll be a place where you can, um, you know, probably look different for me, but there'll be a place here where you can attach or, or upload a file and submit it. So, so you'll just need to, to upload the, the correct IPython notebook file. All right. And I know, I mean, we are talking about the assignment now, so I could, you know, talk a little bit about specifically about the, the four specific problems, questions here, if people would like. Um, well, let's see here. For, for the code, so the, the question was, uh, I guess, about uh, like maybe commenting code or code style. Yes, I mean, this isn't really a programming class, so I don't know, I might gripe at you. Like, for example, you know, um, I'll, I will try to always uh, write what are known as Python function documentation, so py Python uh, doc um, strings for the functions, you know, it's a good habit to, to write, to always write these yourself. So every function you write should have a doc string with it, you know, but I probably won't take points off that, especially not for the first assignment. Uh, probably not ever, because like I said, it's not really a programming class, you know, so, so, so I might give you some snarky comments on your program style or something, or give you suggestions on way to, ways to improve things. But in this class, I'm mostly, you know, uh, you know, trying to, evaluate uh, that you solve the problem in terms of, of, of applying the right machine learning methods or, or you know, whatever to solving the problem. So. Uh, there probably is one specific thing though. I mean, your notebook should always run cleanly from top to bottom. So before you submit, uh, make certain that, that you check by using like, like this or the kernel restart and run all, right? So, I mean, if, if it's the case that, I, that you run your notebook and it stops, it doesn't run all the cells cleanly, you should fix that, you know. So, so your notebook should always, the, the ones you submit for assignments, you know, um, I, I mean, I'm not going to run them in out of order. So, so uh, every cell should run sequentially from top to bottom, basically. Um, or you've got an issue of some kind that you need to fix. Um, yeah, sorry. I mean, um, I don't have a different line to call in on. So this is Zoom. So. Um, okay, so yeah, apparently, oops, the video, I mean, you know, the audio quality isn't that great, um, but don't know if the recording will be better or not.
Um, okay, so I think maybe uh, maybe I'll come back to the assignment, um, and yeah, we'll see if things clear up. So probably a little less, uh, and, and, and you know, we can repeat ourselves. So I can um, go to um, we, we can come back and 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 talk about the assignment stuff again. So you know, I, I had originally been planning maybe to talk a little bit. Um, um, about this week's um, um, materials, so, so so maybe we'll talk a little bit about that first, and then then see if uh, video connection uh, improves any. So. <clears throat> so. So a couple of things about NumPy that um, that that would be you know uh, that, that I should probably point out. So so make certain you kind of understand these. So um, one thing I tell people that are first kind of learning about NumPy and using it, NumPy is actually closer to um, a, a plain array in Java or C that that you might be familiar with. Okay. So it's 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 a hom it's a homogeneous data structure. Um, so you know, like an array in C or Java, basically its purpose is to hold data all of the same type, right? So um, whenever you you know create an array, it has an associated data type with it. So the, again, this is the a, a list, uh, a regular Python list is a much higher level. Um, Container than, than a NumPy array in that sense. So, so you know, a regular list can hold data of different types and, and uh, can have a lot of different nesting and things like that. So, you know, the, a basic NumPy array um, <clears throat> um, it, it's just meant to hold data all of the same type. So, so this is mostly per, for performance reasons, right? Um, so NumPy arrays um, um, are built specifically for um, for doing numerical calculations, right? So uh, so efficiency is kind of the primary concern, right? So so the way these are implemented in memory is is they're going to be held as a as a whole block of of, of values somewhere in memory. So that we can, um, you know, efficiently do calculations with them. So, um, so anyway, I mean, you know, that's 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 kind of the the basic ideas of of, of the array. So I mean, you ought to be able to do the the kinds of things that we talk about in here. Um, um, you know, be able to create arrays, um, uh, understand the basic properties of them, like their shape, um, their number of dimensions, right? So, you know, so we have a couple of examples, like um, like here's an array that's three-dimensional, um, where we have uh, five, um, basically five kind of tables of, of data in the array here, uh, where each table is four rows by three columns. So, so, so you know, the, the, this, this kind of information about an array is um, um, kind of what you need to know in order to work with the with NumPy array. So uh, you, you can completely describe an array by the tuple. So, so a three-dimensional array will have a tuple, and each value in the tuple um, is, is the, the, the size of that dimension, basically. So, so for this three-dimensional, we, we've got five stacked tables, where each table is for rows um, and three columns of information. <clears throat> so you can create arrays in many different ways. Um, 
you know, so some of the important ones are, you know, using like ranges in order to create ranges of arrays. Um, so so uh, A range and Lin space are probably two of the ones that you use the most for this kind of array creation. Um, so I guess in terms of the, the important concepts, so I, I kind of just wanted to maybe talk about two, two more things here about arrays, unless people have some questions um, on them. Um, so the, the one you should understand is this idea of, of vectorized computations or, or, or doing vectorized operations with arrays, all right? So what it, what it comes down to is, you know, we can do things like this. So in most languages that, that most students are probably more familiar with at this point, uh, you can't do things like this on whole arrays, right? So if I wanted to multiply all the values of an array in, in an array by 10, I'd have to write some loops, you know, or, or if, if I have a two dimensional array, I might have to write some nested loops, you know, to, 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 to iterate over the rows and iterate over the columns. So, um, so basic, what are known as, as the scalar vector operations are um, supported for arrays. So, so, you know, you can always take a, a scalar value and apply an operation against it on an array. So, so add a value to all the values in an array or, or subtract a value to all the values in an array. Um, there's lots of um, functions, you know, that, that operate on the whole array. Um, so, you know, uh, 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 these u funks, universal functions, um, um, are provided by NumPy in, in the standard NumPy library. So you, so you can do things like mathematical operations, sines and cosines, absolute values, and, and things like that. So, uh, but you can also do some kinds of operations between two arrays, right? So instead of just a scalar with an array, um, you know, so the, the, whether this will work or not depends on the, the, the size of the two arrays that you're doing things with. So if they're of, of equal shape and size, you should be able to, to uh, subtract, add, and multiply, and it'll, it'll do like a scalar, right? So um, here, we're, in, in, we're not really doing matrix multiplication, we're doing um, element-wise multiplication um, between these two arrays. Um, you can do matrix multiplication though as well. So, um, and this is relatively new to the language, but um, the uh, at san, ampersand, not the ampersand, the, the at sign was overloaded to be defined for matrix multiplication. So you might see that. I think I use that occasionally. Um, so, so these are different operators though. So. But this is probably the, the most important thing uh, kind of here. So, so this idea is, is, you know, if you understand that kind of the vectorized operations, um, that means that you can write expressions like, like this um, and, 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 and have operations done like this um, um, all at once on an array of values, okay? So, so the most basic way that you can illustrate something like that is like if we want to plot, uh, if we want to visualize the shape of a complex function, uh, something like this. Um, you know, so again, in, in, in a programming language that doesn't support vectorization, I'd have to write a loop to calculate the, the values one by one for all the points in the X range that I want to create um, my plot for like this. But here, I can just create one array of x values that spans the range that we want to plot. So that's what x is here. And, and we can do all these operations as one vectorized. And, and um, you know, so, you know, uh, besides multiplying, multiplying and adding and subtracting, you can raise an array to a power. So again, that's just doing like a scalar operation with the array. Um, all of these are going to have uh, the, the result of like the cosine and the sine is going to be a new array, but with the same shape as, as whatever, <coughs> whatever X ended up being here. 
So, you know, so when we end up like adding the results of this to that, the, 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 the two arrays will be of the same shape. So anyway, um, you end up with, um, Um, you end up being able to, you know, uh, uh, calculate the, the whole function in one basic expression, right? So, so this, is, this is, you know, looks mathematical, basically, um, in, in order to, to calculate the, the shape and, and display the shape of the function here. Um, oh. So yeah, so so you know, if, if you guys can still hear me, um, um, that's kind of um, I mean, that, that's one of the, the the big important ones, right? So kind of wrap your head around this idea of <clears throat> vectorized computations and, and and being able to do things this way instead of writing loops, right? Whenever possible, you you, you know, um, we want to write code like this because this is going to be much more efficient than writing a loop that that calculates each one of these function values individually you know, in order to you know um, visualize this uh, this resulting function here so. um, All right, so yeah, I mean, um, I'm gonna maybe kind of move over some of the stuff here. So, you know, th there are th other kinds of things that you ought to be aware of, like functions you can call on arrays to do various things, reshape them, um, calculate mins and maximums and things like that. Um, so, um, and and maybe before I skip over this, uh, besides doing um, arithmetic operations, uh, you know, you can also do um, logical operations on arrays as well. So we'll come back to that when we talk a little bit about um, slicing arrays and, and things like that. But you know, kind of the same things like adding, subtracting. You can also do things like um, um, do comparisons for equality or less than, and and uh, and, and you can ask, also combine things. Although, as I talk about here, um, the uh, for various reasons, the uh, the common uh, and and or operators don't directly work. So there's a little bit of a of, of kind of a hack. You can use um, uh, the um, bitwise operator and it does work as expected so a bitwise or or a bitwise and right or otherwise you need to use like the a numpy function to, to get like the or of two um, expressions so. <clears throat> so that brings me probably to the the second thing that you know, I would emphasize um, about NumPy arrays that you ought to, you know, kind of understand. Although, you know, it, it's it's the the indexing and slicing of, of arrays. Um, so, um, although you know, first of all, if if uh, I mentioned this um, like last week, so the the same kind of concepts that we talked about for indexing and slicing. Uh, regular Python uh, lists and, and other data structures, that, that same um, notation and, and syntax uh, applies to NumPy arrays, all right? It's just that uh, NumPy arrays extend it also to, to allow it on the multi-dimensions, multi the multiple dimensions of the NumPy array. So, so you can not only slice on an array that's like one-dimensional, like A here, um, all, all the ways that we could with a list and the, and, the, um, and the tuples and other things, you know, but you can um, slice over multiple dimensions. Um, you know, so, so if you have a two-dimensional or three-dimensional array or whatever, um, um, you can get slices along the different uh, um, dimensions. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, this is um, like like one of the the the, the second or third problem. The, well, the second problem um, for our first assignment. Um, is kind of about using NumPy, and, and a lot of it will uh, depend on you um, um, uh, kind of understanding the, the, the slicing and also this advanced indexing um, um, pretty well. So. so yeah, so I already mentioned, you know, so the, the NumPy arrays extend this indexing and slicing so you can do it with multiple dimensions, right? So the, the, the basic, we skipped over it before, but the basic, if I want to get a particular element um, for like a two-dimensional array, I can, I can specify two particular indexes. So this will get me the item at, at row two where, you know, we're, we're zero based indexing. So, so this is row zero, one, two, um, and then column three, right? So that should give me the, um, um, uh, this value here. Right? And if you have three dimensions, you can specify three indexes, right? But you can also specify slices, like I said, for each individual uh, index. So we can extract just particular row, all, all the columns, but some particular rows, or vice versa, we can um, extract all the rows, but one particular column in this case, column one, that kind of thing. Um, so there, I mean, there's lots of different examples um, of this kind of multi-dimensional um, slicing. So, and then kind of maybe one one more thing, and then maybe I'll move on to the next topic. Unless, um, so again, I'm not certain how well people are uh, hearing this. Um, I mean, you know, hopefully you can, of course, always look through these notebooks and watch the lecture videos on your your own as well. So, but um, um, so kind of the the the, the last sort of thing maybe um, that I'll point out here is, is to do um, our first assignment and a lot of the stuff in the class then you really do have to understand kind of this indexing, this advanced indexing um, of arrays, of, of NumPy arrays. So, <clears throat> so there's a couple different ways you can do these. Um, so you can like this, like specify, uh, use a list. Um, so, so to get only rows one, three, and four, for example. So that should pick out the row one and the row three and the four, right? Uh, you can do the same thing to get columns. It's a little bit more complex if you want to do that both for rows and columns, but um, uh, you can do things like that. Um, so the, the most, for this class, the, the way that we would use this kind of uh, indexing using a list uh, most often is uh, if we need to do like a train test split, um, a common thing that we might do if we're going to do it by hand on our own is we might create a, a list or an array of all the indexes of the items um, in our data set. And then we might just randomly shuffle that. Um, and, and then that way we can just split it like in half or something like that. But, but with, with the indexes randomly shuffled, then we can use this kind of indexing by um, a, a list of indexes to, pull, to randomly pull out uh, some shuffled instances for training um, or something like that. Um, so besides using a, um, an array of indexes, um, you, we can also do Boolean indexing, okay? So I know for the first assignment, uh, that's kind of the more important one uh, here. So, so you have to create a Boolean mask and use that for indexing. So yeah, real, I mean, real quickly, um, like if we create a mask of only those values that are divisible by three, 
um, you know, we get something like this, although again, this is only the, the, the zeroth and the fourth column here, but, but anyway, I mean, that's our masks. So, so we end up with a, a, a resulting Boolean array. And then if you index by that mask, like we do here, um, so notice that the, the sh shape of this isn't the same anymore, right? So it's, it's only those elements that were true in the mask that we use that, that get pulled out. Uh, when you do the Boolean indexing like this. So. All right. So yeah, I mean, you know, th that's just kind of some random things of, about the NumPy arrays. Um, but, but yeah, like I said, I, I think kind of, if I had to pick out some things, you know, make certain that you, that you understand this idea of, of vectorized um, operations and vectorized computations. So we'll, we'll be relying on that heavily um, and, also, uh, and also be comfortable, you know, that you can slice these arrays um, and, and do this kind of indexing with, with a Boolean mask or with a, um, a, a list of indexes in order to, um, pull out elements, rows or columns or particular elements in an array, so. Um, all right. So yeah, I really don't know how well people are hearing that. I think my connection is still pretty um, weak right now um, at home here. Um, let's, uh, but yeah, maybe we can move on, see if people can hear a few things about Matplotlib a bit. Um, So let's see. I guess you know for for Matplotlib. Um, you know, if, if if you know how to do a basic plot, you know you're probably not going to have to do a lot of advanced plotting. So so a lot of this, um, not in this course. Um, so a lot of this lecture is just more to make you aware of what's possible, right? Um, but, you know, in terms of what I might have you do on assignments or things, you know, mostly if you can create like a, like a basic plot of, of, of you know, the, the, your X values plotted against the, the Y values of the function, um, that'll probably be enough for the majority of assignments, I think. Well, you know, um, I, I probably shouldn't say that uh, completely because so for some assignments um yeah so i might ask you to do something a little bit more complex you know like, like create a contour plot or something but you usually have an example um to kind of work from and and, and base the, the the plot on you know to extend or, or or to reuse for your particular analysis that you did so So, um, so I'm not too sure, you know, um, how much to talk about on here um, about you know, on the Matplotlib uh, lecture notebook. I mean, just make certain that that you definitely understand the, the this most basic kind of idea, you know. So, so to to create a basic plot, we just need two arrays of the same shape, uh, a two dimensional plot. Um, so, so these two arrays need to be of the same shape, same size. Um, and, and of course, if you do a vectorized computation like this, like taking the sign of all the X values, X and S will be of the same shape um, and size. Um, but, but yeah, that, that'll allow you to create a basic visualization of, um, of you know, so, so in, in the one, you've got your X values, which are just about, which is just a range of values in this case from negative three to three. And then on, on the other is going to be the, the, the 
the plot of the point. So the each corresponding pair of points gets plotted. Um, and technically, these get connected with uh, line segments. Um, but you know, as long as you, um, as long as your mesh, you know, as, as long as the values that you're plotting is sufficiently dense enough, um, you won't be able to see that. You know, it'll it'll um, you'll you'll see the the true smooth shape of the function, right? So. Um, So if I plot too small of, of a value on this, you know, so if I only plot, um, you know, five values, you'll uh, be able to see the, um, the, the, the interpolation, basically, the, the approximation of the, the shape, you know, from here like this. So that's that's why you know you're you're of course you know it doesn't um, um, beyond a particular size of your of your space or or your mesh um, you know you're just kind of wasting computations right because you've only got so many pixels on your screen so you know I've I've only got maybe about eighteen hundred pixels total all the way across my screen so you, you usually don't have to go much more above a thousand or so to get a good plot. Um, and, and to be able to, to correctly get, you know, visualize the, uh, the, the shape of your curve. Um, um, Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm, I'm kind of debating or, or thinking about you know what would be good to emphasize on here. Um, yeah. There, there's a lot of examples and, and, and Matplotlib. You know, um, it's um, it's uh, so so. I think I mentioned it, it's 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 really if you use the PyPlot API, which you should. Um, it, it's 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 an object oriented sort of API. So by default, what it's kind of doing is creating a figure object. Um, and then when you call subsequent calls, um, it, it adds elements to that figure object or modifies elements of that, of that uh, particular figure. You know, so you can modify properties of your axes and, and uh, your tick marks and, and your line segments and, and other things. And, and, and again, you can think of all these elements as instances of different kinds of objects on, on the plot that you're working with and modifying. So. Um, so yeah, this, this notebook, uh, the, the first half of it was just um, kind of walking you through. So just by looking through these, you, you ought to get kind of a feel for all the different sorts of properties that you can do and, and tweak, right? And kind of a secondary goal, you know, if you've never taken a class in, making visualizations or scientific presentations or things like that was, you know, a little bit of a flavor of, of some of the, um, of some of the, um, the, the, the things that you ought to be thinking about in order to make your figure, um, you know, readable and understandable to your audience. Um, um, you know, so you should strive, if I, maybe I'll just skip down kind of to the final figure here um, for this first part, you know. So you should strive that every part of your figure um, is um, providing useful information, you know, so you don't want to have uh, uh, too much information. Uh, you want every, everything that you include on your plot to have a purpose for being there, um, to, to be providing something. You should always make certain that things are clearly labeled, you know, so, so you should try to keep in mind who your audience is um, and uh, make certain that um, you give enough context for them to understand um, the different aspects of your plot or your visualization, right? 
it. So, I mean, you know, just uh, some kind of hard rules of thumb is that if you have more than one um, element in a plot, you should always have like a legend um, and, and that you're identifying your different elements, like different lines or, or whatever. Um, you should always mark your axes and then you should actually usually label them. Okay. So, so, so I kind of violate that here, but, but you should, um, uh, in this case, it's really mathematical. So we don't really have like units for these axes, but, but for a lot of things in machine learning, when we're plotting stuff, um, um, you know, you'll have different units. Um, so your, your feature and, and kind of what your resulting Y axis is. So you'll need to, make certain that you clearly label them and, and clearly indicate what the units are of your measurements and things like that. So. Um, all right. So yeah, and, and again, you know, the, the, there's lots of, of details of, of things in here. Um, this is mostly to illustrate kind of what's possible with the basic matplotlib library and, and how you go about, you know, setting these different properties and adding in different elements to a figure um, and that kind of thing. So. Um, And then, yeah, on the second one, maybe I'll just kind of, um, I'm not gonna spend any time on these. Um, you know, so these are just meant to be kind of examples of the different sorts of plots. Um, so, so again, just so that you know what's available, what you might might use, right? Bar charts are a little bit difficult. Um, so, you know, I tend not really to want to try to use these by hand, at least not for matplotlib. So there's lots of things that create bar plots, um, um, but um, uh, at a higher level, like directly from the pandas library, or maybe using a library like Seaborn or something like that. So. But some other basic plots are a little bit more useful, like um, histograms that you can get from matplotlib. Um, but yeah, we'll use a lot of, um, you know, just basic scatter plots and, and line plots. Um, for different things. So, so you know, you should always, uh, th th there's a different purpose for like a, a scatter plot versus um, adding a line to a plot, which uh, a lot of, you know, students uh, don't quite appreciate the, uh, uh, the, the, the differences between these. So you use a scatter plot when you're plotting, you know, raw data and, and you're trying to visualize the, um, uh, the relationship so for a two-dimensional scatter plot, uh, we're going to be trying to visualize the relationship between two separate variables, uh, basically, right? But um, you you use lines when you're representing like a model of some kind. So so in this case, you know, we're representing a fit of uh, of, of the best uh, linear approximation of the relationship between these two uh, variables here. So, um, and yeah, I mean, the, the, the week after next, we're gonna be getting into linear regression, you know, talking about how you, you know, build a model, you know, to fit like a, a line to a set of data points to, to try and model a, a, um, a potential relationship like this. So. Um, all right, and and yeah, there are some three D plots. Um, I mean, I I should, you know, at least mention the contour plot, um, because uh, now that I think about that, um, uh, we do kind of make use of these in a couple of places uh, for machine learning. So these are useful to. Um, uh, so I was just working on some of our lectures for uh, visualizing decision boundaries of of a machine learning classifier. Right, so so we often use a contour plot in order to figure out what where the decision boundary ended up being um, to visualize it for a, a, a classifier that they might build. So, so you can do three uh, D um, uh, contour plots, which is a, a two dimensional projection of a three D 
sort of data set, um, or you can do a full 3D plot. Um, you can do animations. Um, uh, all right. So yeah, that that was that was kind of just quickly some of the things in here and the plotting. Um, but yeah, the, the most important, you know, besides just realizing what's available, um, you know, just do make certain that you can do basic plots and understand the, the basic mechanisms of those uh, this week. So. Um, And then, yeah, the third notebook was about pandas. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably be using pandas a lot. Um, it's, a, it's a very nice addition to the basic um, Python scientific stack. So, yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Um, so, so we mostly, though, use it in, in relatively simple ways, although for your first assignment, um, I do have the, the fourth question is on um, um, doing some things with pandas. So you'll have to understand few of kind of the details of, of using pandas here. Um, so the, the basic thing about pandas that you ought to understand, I guess, is, uh, so you might want to compare uh, a pandas data frame to a, a NumPy two-dimensional array, okay? So, so we often use both of these um, to represent a set of data. And I think I talked a little bit about that in, in this lecture notebook, if not in other places. Um, so yeah, like here, so our most common representation of data is as a two dimensional table. So, so we can represent that using a NumPy array. So, so we have, um, so, so normally we have each row of a table is gonna be one, um, um, one sample of, from some experiment or one subject in an experiment. And then each column is gonna be a different feature. So different measurements that we did on, on our subjects or on our samples, right? So I described some of that in here. So, so you can use just a NumPy um, array to do that, but um, you can also use a pandas data frame, okay? The, the restriction for a NumPy array is that, remember the a NumPy array has to be um, all, all the items in the array have to be of the same type. So if, if you use a NumPy array, everything's going to have to be like a floating point number or, or maybe an integer. Uh, but, but usually everything will just be floating point data. And you have to convert things to floating point data, okay? So pandas data frames, which are a, a, a table like this with rows and columns, usually you can do more complex things, but um, um, but the, the, the main difference, the, the, the main thing that a pandas data frame adds is that the columns can be of different types, okay? So a pandas data frame was inspired by the data frame from the R programming language, um, which I might have mentioned in here, um, probably. Um, so that you can do a lot of, of the similar things, whether you're using an R, a data frame in R or a data frame in, um, using the pandas library. Um, so basically, each each column of a data frame uh, is can, can be a different type, right? Um, so so each column so so but um, but uh, so I usually think of a data frame as a collection of these series objects, which which represent the columns. Each of the series has to have the same number of items in it because we have to have. You know, for, for every row, for every sample, uh, each one of our columns has to have um, an, uh, an item for each one of those samples, right? So that's kind of about the only restriction. But so, so, so once you create these series, um, um, uh, they'll all have the, the, the same number of items in them, but, but they can be of different data types, right? So a similar concept that you can use um, 
more recently in things like Matplotlib and some other plotting libraries, you can also use a dictionary of um, objects. So, um, if you, if, uh, so, so a pandas data frame is similar to having a dictionary where each column uh, is like the name of a feature, right? So, so for a dictionary, each, each feature you have a key and then the value is going to be that series, um, you know, all those values for that particular feature that's indexed by that key. So. Um, so anyway, so this, this notebook has, you know, the, some, the basics of, of how you can create some of these by hand. So again, usually, I, I think late, yeah, I mean, later on, you know, our more normal way of, of using a data frame is not to create things by hand like this. So these are mostly for illustrations. Um, but, um, you know, so, so normally what we do is we have a file or a database or something more complex that's a, a source of data um, and we will load that data from a file into a pandas data frame so that we can do, um, you know, our operations with it that, that, uh, that, that the data frame supports, right? So, um, but, uh, but yeah, let me go back, you know, so you ought to be comfortable with, with um, uh, so there are some differences. So you can, you know, get like rows and columns uh, and, and, and other information about a pandas data frame. Um, so, so I think, um, yeah, I talk about it. So, uh, but the, there are, there will be a few surprises. Um, so like, you know, you, you can get, for example, the first three rows in, in a similar way to, to slice out a data frame if you want to. Uh, but um, or, but you can do other things. So you know each each of the columns, each of the features has a name. So you can you can get a column um, also by by just giving the data frame and using kind of the square brackets notation uh, and a column name to, to, to directly get one of these columns or one of these series here, right? Um, oh, and yeah. And by the way, um, as a convenience. Um, uh, you can also use, so, so every column feature has a direct um, attribute that you can use, right? So, so we, could, we could also get that same column C just by getting, using dot C here. So. Um, and you can slice by particular column, so you, so you couldn't use that dot attribute notation if you wanted to get multiple columns. Uh, but but you could use something like uh, indexed, um, uh, so like for a NumPy array, passing in uh, a, a list of integer indexes. Um, for a, a, a pandas data frame, we could pass in a list of the column names to get just those columns, right? So again, this section is just all about different ways that you can select and slice a data frame, right? Um, but uh, although, you know, some of these things you can't do directly, so you might expect, like, like if, if, if you know how to slice and get, like, uh, the first three columns of a NumPy array, you might expect you can do the same thing. But sometimes you'll be surprised you can't do those things directly. Although, so again, something that's been added, this wasn't always here, but now there are accessor, um, this is really an, uh, an accessor attribute. So the iloc um, accessor supports, um, slicing by row and column indexes so that you can treat the, 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 the pandas data frame in the same way that you would a NumPy array. Um, but uh, I think as I mentioned in this notebook, um, if you find yourself doing this a lot, you might not be using the data frame in quite the, the correct way because really the way you should be referring to the features of, of, of a data frame is not by these index numbers, but by the, the feature names, you know, so A, B, C, the, the, the column names in this case, right? So. Um, but yeah, this, this section is all about um, kind of 
how you can pull out different things, right? And the other thing uh, about here though, I mean, you know, this is not just for pulling the information out, but you can use this to manipulate the information. So I'm, I'm sure I uh, show examples of this. Um, let's see, um, like uh, adding and setting data. So you can use that to add new features that are derived from existing features. Um, or you can use that to modify. Um, so, so yeah, like, I mean, here we're adding like a, a new column called scalar um, uh, in here, which has all fives in it. Um, and we give other examples, like, like adding a new column, which is a derived feature of the other columns and things like that, okay? So, so it's, you know, data frames are very powerful for allowing you to manipulate um, uh, the data that you have of, of, of a data set that you're trying to analyze. With, with these kinds of operations on it. Um, so uh, I think that I kind of also talk about that in the operations on data as well. So some of the things I was just talking about here, uh, we talked about in both those places. So um, yeah, and, and um, let's see. So, so yeah, I mean, we'll normally just be loading though this from a, a file, probably a comma separated value file. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you're doing more out in the real world, you might have to load this from like a SQL database or, a <coughs> or, um, you know, um, other kinds of things. So. Um, and then, yeah, kind of finally just to wrap up here and then we'll, and so we can take a little break and try and regroup. Um, kind of the stuff you have to do for the fourth question for the assignment, you know, is, 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 is uh, you know, you'll want to read kind of more near the end of this notebook. So there's examples of similar things. Um, so these kinds of operations. So finding the, the missing values. Um, so, so there's built-in functions to help you find the missing values and maybe remove them. So you can remove all the columns or, or all the rows that have missing values or, or all things that, that, that have a missing value in them um, using a data frame and you can find them using those things. Um, yeah, and then so on. So. Okay, um, so yeah, I think um, like usual, I'm gonna take a break here for about five minutes, um, try and regroup a bit. So I don't know if, I think the connection improved a bit, uh, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll re-go over kind of the assignment when I come back here, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. So everybody take a, you know, five minute break uh, here uh, and I'll start back up again, probably about 5.45. So, all right. So let me stop the recording here.